All right, guys, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an automatic transmission fluid change on General Motors vehicles with the 6T40 and the 6T45 transmission. So if we take a look, for example, on this manual out of a 2012 Cruze, and this particular transmission is used in a lot of models. I'll put in the description what you can look for. Um, we'll see that this is supposed to be done every 97,500 miles. And so this particular vehicle, it's time to do that. So I'm going to take you through that today. It's really pretty simple to do DIY. There's only one part that's kind of hard, and we'll talk about that when it comes up. So let's get started. All right, guys, coming over on top of the engine, coming over to the driver's side, what we're going to look for first is the fill plug for these transmissions. And that's this guy right here. All right, and so you're going to clean around this, get some compressed air, blow it out so you don't have any debris, and then you're just going to unscrew it. Lefty Lucy. You can see there's a cap here, right? There's no dipstick nowadays on a General Motors transmission, but we're going to take this out, set it aside, and what we're going to stick in here, if you go all the way down here and zoom in, you can see actually where the uh, fluid gets added to the transmission. And then what we're going to put in here, if we step back a second, is we're going to put a long funnel like this. Now, if you don't have a funnel like this, you can get away with a small funnel and some plastic tubing. But the point is, we're going to put this down inside where we took that filler tube out so that we can fill. Now, if what you have is too big to fit in here nicely, I mean, I selected this particular type and brand a few years ago because it works really well where the engine computer is mounted right here. You can always remove these 10 millimeter nuts on the top and the bottom and take this guy out of the way to give yourself some more room. Uh, near the end of the video, I'll roll the torque value on those as well. So this is where we're going to add the fluid. Let's talk about where we're going to remove and drain the fluid as well as how to check when it's level. Alright guys, so we're going to jack this up in order to drain it. But my advice is to leave the wheel turned all the way to the right. As we zoom in here to the driver's side wheel well, you'll see why we're doing this. So right at the tip of this screwdriver is a fill plug check port. We're going to end up removing this bolt after we get everything drained out and we start the fill process, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on that guy right there that you can see the tip of my screwdriver on. And we're going to have to get the transmission up to a particular temperature that I'll show you in the service manual. And as we fill it in, we're going to watch for it to dribble out from here. In order for this technique to work, we have to keep the vehicle level on the ground. So that's why we're not going to have it jacked up except for the drain, and that's why we've got the tire turned in so that we can... All right, guys, let's get going with the drain. So we're underneath the car, and what we'll find is the transmission will be over here on the driver's side, and you'll end up, if we zoom in here, you'll find a 12-millimeter plug in the bottom of the transmission. And it's kind of an unusual size at 12-millimeter. So we've got our guy jacked up and, and secured just enough to get to this. Just going to take our wrench, put our 12 millimeter socket on here. Work this guy off, and then we'll come back when we get him draining. All right, guys, we just about got it to the end here. I switched to a small little 12 millimeter ratchet. And there she goes. So while this is draining out, let me take you through what the service manual has to say about this procedure. All right, so again, I'm looking at a 2012 P car, which is a cruise, but this is going to be the same procedure for any of the vehicles that have this particular transmission. So we're going to come over and we're going to be looking at the specs for all of these transmissions this vehicle had, but this video is primarily focused on the 6T40 and the 6T45. If we come back and take a look at the drain and fill procedure, and again, it's the same for any car with this transmission. So we just took out the fill plug that we see here. And what they do is they talk about letting that go for 10 minutes to make sure that you get as much of it out of, their, uh, of the uh, housing as you can. And then when we take it out, we're going to take a look and make sure that we don't see any metal chips or debris that we shouldn't expect to see in there after 97,000 plus miles. After we get all that drained out, we're going to put that plug underneath back in and we're going to torque it to either 12 newton meters or 106 inch pounds. So after we've got the drain plug back in, we're going to start the fill procedure that I was explaining before. 
So we're going to come up on top. They talk about removing the cap, and some vehicles will have a vent, right? This one has a vented cap, so there's no hose, but you may have this type of setup that you see in the picture. It doesn't matter. Whichever way you have it, you're going to remove the cap that we took off earlier, and then we're going to use the funnel to start filling the transmission. If we take a look at the referenced pages for the 4045 on 17.8, and we take a look at how much um, fluid she's going to hold. Take a look right over here under general specifications. And we see that for the Dextron, Dextron 6 fluid that the capacity is either 8 liters or 8.5 quarts is how much that it holds. And then if we take a look at the um, measurements on different, on, on different jobs, and we see on a fluid change with the drain plug, it's approximately 4.2 to 6.3 quarts that are going to come out. So you're going to want to buy at least 5 quarts so that you're somewhere around this range, or 6 to cover yourself for what you might get out of yours. When you start this fill, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put in 4 quarts, so you could usually buy like a, a gallon size then a couple of 1 quarts to go with it. And then we're going to do the, the final top off using this fluid level check procedure. So we're going to start the engine. We're going to um, go through each of the gears to work that initial amount of fluid that we added back in. And then we're going to allow the engine to idle for a few minutes in order to get rid of any air that's in from what we drained out and what we put back in. And that we're really aiming to do is we're aiming to get the transmission fluid up to a particular temperature. 85 to 95 degrees Celsius or in Fahrenheit 185 to 203. Now this was the hard part that I was mentioning before. You're going to have to have a scan tool that can tell you what the transmission fluid is on most of these vehicles. You know higher end trucks will have it in the driver information center. Most of these other vehicles though you're going to have to have a scan tool in order to see what that is and there's really not a lot of good cheap options unless maybe you have Android you might be able to pick up something like Torque Pro which will have the right PID for this but um, nothing really for Apple products like an iPhone, iPad or, or a Mac or, or a Windows PC. So when you see me do this I'll be using a, a professional scan tool but that's something to keep in mind. And when we get this heated up then we're going to use that plug that we showed earlier to, to check whether it's full. So it goes on and talks about why this is important why an overfilled transmission um, it, it can cause problems. They talk about keeping the engine going until you get to that temperature and then either like I just said using the driver information center or a scan tool to tell when you're in the right range. They give you a warning here to make sure that you understand that the engine must be running when that plug is removed. So you can't take that plug behind the wheel out before you start the engine. You've got to take it out after you start the engine. I'm going to crack the torque on it before we start the engine just to make it easier to get off, but we're not going to remove it until the engine's already running. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to get a good measurement. Plus, this fluid's going to be hot and could be some injury if it squirts out on you under pressure. So after it's started up, we're going to remove the plug. We're going to put our drain pan underneath it, and then while the engine continues to idle and we take that fluid plug out, and this, we're going to show all this in a minute here, um, then we're going to go ahead and start to add to uh, transmission fluid to the vehicle while it's, at, while it's still idling. And we're going to watch for the fluid come out of that plug area as a stream. Right? So again, that drain plug, which we see in the graphic here, I'm sorry, the, uh, the fill check plug. This is what we saw earlier right behind the wheel that we see in this graphic here, part number three. After we start the engine up, after we put in the first four, four and a half quarts or so, then we're going to take this plug out while the engine is running and at the correct temperature that we mentioned over here, this range over here again, that we've determined with a scan tool that we're in that range. When we take this guy out, we're going to see if we get a steady stream of ATF flowing out of it. If it, we don't, we're going to continue slowly adding through our funnel until we do. Then once we do, we're going to put the plug back in and we're done. So that's the next step we're going to go do. All right, guys, we got that plug back in. Just make sure you don't over tighten it because it is an aluminum body for the transmission. And we've got our fluid. We didn't have any spillage. We had a few drops come off when we were trying to put the plug in. So our fluid, this is an eight quart pan. Looks like we got somewhere 
around five quarts or so out of it, maybe a little bit more. That's just a rough rough guess because it doesn't have any kind of a graduated mark on here. So let's go ahead now that we've got the plug back in and start refilling. So we're going to come up here to our funnel. And like I mentioned, I'm just going to put in a, uh, a one gallon size initially and then we'll do the smaller ones as part of the procedure top it off. But again, we're going to fill it with Dexron 6 only. Make sure whatever you're using is marked Dexron 6. So we'll put these four quarts in this gallon container first and then we'll run through the service procedure manual which it says about going through the different gears uh, to help get the fluid all worked in there. All right guys we're doing this step here we've gone through one we've gone through two we've gone through each of the gear positions for three seconds each and we're on number three and waiting now for that temperature so it's well past the three minutes so we don't have to worry about the frothing and dissipation that's already stabilized we're down here waiting to get to 85 degrees Celsius minimum. Now remember before, like I mentioned, it's really important you fall on this range. If you don't get it in this range, you're either going to have an under or overfilled transmission. By trying to set it over 95, it ends up being underfilled. And if you try to set it under 85, excuse me, over 95, it's underfilled. And under 85, it's overfilled. And they, they tell you right here, if you underfill it, it's going to cause a lot of wear and damage and if you overfill it it's going to cause it to leak because it's going to come out of the vent tube or the vent cap or you're going to get cavitation in the pump so we're trying to get it to this actual temperature and we're using a scan tool for that and like I said you earlier you know we talked about that um, I'm using a kind of pro level tool and GMMDI interface just like the dealers used to use this happens to be a knockoff version uh, you could it's a 20 it's a J2534 type interface there's a lot of different products out there you could use to do this you could even, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, put one of those kind of OBD2 readers in there if you have an Android device or something like that that would have the ability to read it. And then if we come over here and look at the actual screen, what we're monitoring here is the transmission fluid temperature. We're up to 31 degrees Celsius. We gotta wait till this guy gets all the way up to 85, and then we can start uh, completing our fill. All right, guys, if we take a look at our transmission fluid temperature now, we can see we're finally in the sweet spot zone sitting at 86 degrees Celsius, so we can start the procedure and do the fill level top off now. All right, guys, we got a pan under here. And if we go scroll back up to our little bolt while the engine's running, we're gonna go ahead and remove him. Might have to take the socket off the ratchet because it's already gotten too loose to grab it. All right, guys, finally got the uh, extension off the ratchet. So I can twist it with my hand and get our little plug out. Almost. There we go. All right, let's bring them out with the socket. So now I'm going to go back on top and I'm going to start continuing to add fluid into our funnel until we see it drizzle out of this little hole. And we got about a half of a quart in there past the gallon that we put in earlier. And now it's coming out. At this point, we've got it full. So we don't add any more. And go ahead and put the cap back on our quart of fluid. And then we're going to go feed our plug back in. which is the hard part. Maybe I can just get it in here with my hand. I might bump you guys. Just a second. Watch your fingers, because it's kind of hot. And then we're just going to torque this guy back to 
106 inch pounds just like the drain plug and that's it and then we'll get some brake clean and clean up the spill and then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, cap back on the top so let me go get this guy torqued down and we'll wrap up all right guys we got this torqued down and we sprayed some uh, engine degreaser on there rather than brake clean either one will do right just to get the atf off so it'll dry up and be gone i'll give that a little spritz of water and that'll wrap up that piece it Remember, it's steel going in, that 12 millimeter fuel uh, fluid level check plug going into that aluminum housing. You definitely do not want to over tighten it. So if you don't have a torque wrench, you know, go, go, go easy on it. It's better that you don't strip it than you go too far in. Now, if we come up on top, we've got our full plug reinstalled. Right, so with this guy's back in to his home down here, all the way down there. And if you ended up taking this off, I'll roll the torque values for these nuts down at the bottom of the video for you if you ended up having to take those off to get clearance. But we're done, and that's how you properly do a fill. Um, I'll give you some advice on this one. It took a little while to heat it up, uh, a little bit longer than I thought. And, you know, you want to leave it idling rather than revving it up because it's not all the way full. And that ended up taking us into some dusk here, and we lost some light. So I'm going to kind of plan on having another a good half hour, 45 minutes to heat it up if the engine wasn't hot to begin with. Anyway, I hope this helps you out, saves you some money so you can do this yourself, shows you that it's very straightforward to do. The only hard part is finding a scan tool so that you can get what you need for that transmission fluid temperature. Go ahead and leave some questions below. I'll try to help if you have them. If you found this useful and you found this interesting, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.